So type two diabetes is the scourge of the Western world. It's an epidemic proportions and can lead to very serious health risks. So it was of great interest um, last month in October 2023 when a study came out claiming that people who eat red meat are more at risk of getting type 2 diabetes. Now, most people know that diabetes is linked to glucose and sugar consumption. So that just seems a little odd because as far as I know, meat doesn't have any glucose in it. So just as well that today... We have Dr. Zoe Harkham, who has a PhD in public health and nutrition, to talk us through the study. You've nailed it. You've just nailed it already. <laughs> diabetes. Yeah, diabetes is a condition of the inability to handle glucose and meat contains no glucose. This makes no sense. Makes no sense from the beginning. Right. So let's quickly unpack this. Right. Um, number one, this is what we call a population study. They're also known as epidemiological studies. This is when you study a big population and you look at that big population, and you gather lots of data on them at the beginning of the population study, and then you follow them for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And right. You, and, and is that what they did in this? That's in this? exactly what they, they've done in this. So in this um, particular research paper, they used three population studies. They used the, what was called the Nurses Health Study Number 1, and that's an American study that kicked off in 1980 in the U.S., then the Nurses Health Study 2, which kicked off after the Nurses Health Study 1, and then th those were all women. And then to bring men to the party, they kicked off something called the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, HPFS, uh, which kicked off in 1986. So they had over 100, I think it was a couple of hundred thousand for this study, men. Wow, and that's a long-term study. That's Yes, death. yes. It's a long term study. So what they do is at the beginning of that study, and this is the first floor of all population studies when it comes to diet papers, is that they ask those 200,000 people to fill in a food frequency questionnaire. And the questionnaire isn't what did you eat yesterday, Glyn? It's the questionnaire is what did you eat last year? Um, how many how many six to eight ounce skinless chicken breasts did you consume on average last year? But why would they ask about last year and not this year? Because they consider that that's a longer period of time in which to assess your in intake. Because if I ask you what you ate yesterday, yesterday might have been unusual. So mm -hmm. they think if they ask you what you typically eat over a year, and yes, there's some things that we have every day. You might have a milky coffee every day, um, but the other things are just not that predictable. So floor number one, the food frequency questionnaire is, is absolutely terrible. Um, the next floor of all population studies is that they can only inform you about what we call associations. You can only look at patterns. So they can only come to the conclusion that people who tend to eat red meat tend to get diabetes, type 2 diabetes. And then, of course, they leap to the accusation that this is causal. But you can't do that in a population study. Well, so tend doesn't sound very scientific. Yes, it's not. It's it's that you've <laughs> observed a relationship. You've, you've observed that um, people who eat legumes are healthy. What you don't know is, are, do healthy people eat legumes or do legumes make you healthy? You've got no way of working out cause and effect. So that's the second big problem with these studies. The third one is they trumpet relative risk. So in this study, um, they, they said the relative risk is, is quite high. There's a 60% difference. And people think, oh my goodness, that's that's massive. Yes. Um, you know, 60%, if 100 people there get diabetes, then 160 people there are going to get diabetes, but that's not what it means. So it might mean that in this particular study, one in 10,000 people, and, and I'm just making this up, we didn't yeah. have the absolute risk numbers, right? but it might be that it was one in 10,000 people got diabetes. So a 60% greater risk of that would be 1.6, because 1.6 is 60% bigger than one. Yeah. So if it's one in 10,000 or 1.6 in 10,000. That's so misleading. It is. And it's always that small. It's always that. I've wow. been looking at these papers now for 12 years. This is what I do. Every Monday, I take a paper like this and I dissect it. 
every time it's do timing. You, do you? It's so timing. And, and there was something else because I I I because you had a very swift response to this, I have to say. <laughs> and one of the things that I couldn't believe was their definition of what red meat was. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. So we're going through the, the the flaws that occur in every population study. This is brilliant because we're now moving straight onto the flaws that were particular about about this one so right. you always look at the definition of red meat or if the paper's about whole grains you've got to look at the definition um, of what these are their definite de de definition of red meat included sandwiches so a ham sandwich lasagna um anything basically any any meal that involves carbs that in fact would turn to glucose in your system completely completely and then the other massive thing that was not taken into account that that related to carbohydrates was this is an American study using American populations going back to 1980. So what meat do Americans eat? They eat burgers and hot dogs. Yes, they have roast beef and they have steaks, but the primary consumption of meat over in the US, processed and un they call unprocessed, they call a burger an unprocessed meat over in the US. Do they? Yeah, so they're talking about hot dogs, processed meat, and they're talking about burgers as unprocessed meat. So what do they eat burgers and hot dogs with? A white bun, fries, milkshake, fizzy drink. So those are your sources of glucose, but they didn't look at the intake. That's of insane. It's, it's bias. Absolutely. So people could be eating a burger and a Coke yeah. with fries. Yeah. And they would count that as a protein meal. Yes. They will, obviously they're eating protein and now they have diabetes. Yeah. I mean, why? I, I, I just don't understand the thinking and how that can count. Where did the study come out of? OK, so the study came out of Harvard. Um, and you're asking a really good question there because Harvard have got a very strong anti-meat agenda. Um, and if you do show notes, I'll send you a link to a brilliant piece of investigative journalism that a friend of mine has just done, Nina Teicholz. Um, who's been working for years to try to change the US dietary guidelines, big defender of real food like meat and dairy. Right. And N Nina has done an investigation into one of the lead authors on this report. Um, and he's massively biased towards plant-based conclusions, plant-based diets. He's not acknowledging the fantastic nutrition that comes from red meat, oily fish, full fat dairy, egg yolks. It's a little bit disheartening isn't it? Because if you can't touch, if you can't trust these studies and the research papers, I mean, it's, a, it, you know, I love this kind of interview talking to someone like you, because I'm always interested in this research and these papers, but I don't know how to read them. So having someone like you who can read it and talk about it is, is just fantastic. So what, what else was in there? Yeah, it's so annoying because I, I contacted a journalist. So I have a number of journalists who receive my Monday note and one of the journalists had gone really big on this story. I won't say which broadsheet newspaper it was in the UK, but he'd just pretty much verbatim taken the press release. And I dropped him an email afterwards and said, look, I'm still longing for the day that yeah. a health journalist will actually do the kind of thing that I do. And I and you know me, I'm here. I can help you do this. Yes. Um, it's you know, you're really, there for the, I mean, just as I'm asking you now. Yeah, I'm it's asking you now. Is this true? Yeah. And and uh, so, so, so what else? What, what, what else? else was in the study? I mean... And, and what's your takeaway? Do you, in other words, you don't think that there's a correlation between red meat and type two diabetes? No, it, it's completely absurd that there would be. It's, it's the, one of our, there's another great quote, and I close my note with this quote. There was a surgeon captain called Peter Cleave, and he's quoted as saying from many, many years ago, for an old fashioned food to be responsible for a modern illness is quite the most absurd thing I ever heard in my life. And the most old fashioned food that we have is meat. I mean, it's the one on the on the walls of cave paintings. Well, exactly. And yeah. the most modern illness that we have is type two diabetes. So it makes no sense. What else was wrong? Um, so you, you've got all the usual. I mean, I pulled out 14 issues uh, and it wasn't difficult to do that. And I didn't nitpick. I mean, there were really big yeah. issues. So I looked at, um, they, they reported some information. There's a table one in these papers that puts yeah. loads of information into it. So I'm familiar with looking at that table. And table one would have us believe that women eat more meat, red meat than men and more processed meat than men. So when you looked at the portions in the nurses health study and the portions in the men's health professional study, the women were eating twice the meat intake at the lowest, the lowest intake level. Our intake was double. 
I don't like, think that highly unlikely. I do. And so I, I actually, know. I don't know, but I would think that many more red meat than women. They sure. do. They do. I mean, it is, it's is not only highly unlikely, it's, I've never seen it in my whole life. This would be a finding worthy of a, a you know, proper newspaper article in itself. So I contacted this said lead, uh, lead author, who I'll give you the tip off from Nina on. Yes. And he did actually get back to me. I have actually met him and spoken with him at a conference. He did actually get back to me. And that was, I mean, I didn't put all 14 points to him, but I did put that one to him. And it was hilarious. So the nurses health study kicked off in 1980. The men's one kicked off in 86. So he said, oh, meat intake was already falling by then. But diabetes has been exploding. So if you're trying to tell me that meat intake has been going down and diabetes has been exploding, mm-hmm. then you've just undermined. Exactly. You've undermined this entire point, haven't you? Exactly. In, in your own words. There was another one and I said, um, why didn't you include grains and sugars? So we couldn't see the impact of the burger bun and the fizzy drink and the fries. Yes. And he had reported in the table fish eggs, chicken, dairy, fruits, vegetables, legumes. So I said to him, why didn't you include grains and sugars? Because that's what causes diabetes. He said, yeah. oh, we didn't have enough space. <gasps> I know. I told Nina that. I mean, oh, she roared. my goodness. She roared. I mean, these... Unbelievable. They're taking the, they're taking the Michael. They really are. They're thinking, <laughs> oh, we're, we're Harvard. Um it will sail through peer review peer review should have picked up all of those issues and it didn't it's like oh it's Harvard let's all bow down this happens and... a lot doesn't it yes yes yeah one of the other things that can't happen is um so he said there's a risk ratio for total meat there's a risk ratio for processed meat and there's a risk ratio for unprocessed meat now the risk ratio for total meat has to be in between unprocessed and processed it's kind of like here's the best analogy so um you've got you and you've got Michael and and so we say right Glynis's height is this and Michael's height is this and the height of the couple combined is going to be somewhere in between right yeah? because Michael's height is going to lower the couple's height and yeah, the, your our height average is, height our average gonna, height yeah, yeah. yeah. so total meat has to be in between the other two Yes. It just does, by the same virtue of the man-woman couple. Right. And the total meat risk ratio is higher than the risk ratio for unprocessed meat. It's like, no, the risk ratio for unprocessed meat in your allegations, you know, I'm playing your own game here, is always the highest. So but how did they explain that? Um, oh, he said it was just something to do with how the statistics came out. So, well, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that should have told you that they're wrong. Okay. And then you should go back to understand why they're wrong. Well, I mean, it, I actually can't even believe what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's disturbing because, we, yeah. you, know, you know, so much of our health and our advice, medications, whatever is a lifestyle is coming from these studies. And of course, the press always, you know, clickbaits it. They, you know, which they did with erythritol, they clickbaited it. Oh, erythritol is going to kill you, you know. Just like that. And, and then, you know, you know, most people haven't read the research paper, so we just don't know. So you believe it and you get worried and scared and, you you know, you adapt your life. So, um, yeah, so so thank you. So you would say people who eat red meat need not worry that that is going to give them type 2 diabetes. Absolutely. And, and taking it to the extreme, there are, as you're probably aware, a number of or increasing number of carnivores in the world and they only eat meat. So Jordan Peterson, um, well-known um, yes. you know, global writer, talker, lecturer. Um, yes. big I've heard this, it's called, isn't it called the lion diet or something? Yeah, right. I, mean, only, he, he, I think it's called the lion diet where people only eat meat and organs, which yeah. is not something I could do, but- No, um, me neither, but he only eats meat. His daughter only eats meat. I know somebody I present at conferences with, Sean Baker, he only eats meat. There are an increasing number of people who only eat meat. And I can... I always think it, extremism in any direction is probably not a good thing. Yeah, it's, it's not for me at all. But I can understand why Jordan Peterson does it. Um, because he's found that even eating any plants affects his mental health. And really? he's worked, yeah, he's worked that out for himself. So right. he says if he um, reintroduces plants back into his diet, he suffers terrible depression and anxiety. If his daughter does it, she's had 
multiple problems with um, childhood arthritis. I think she'd had something like, um, it's insane. You should interview her. 17 joint replacements in, in her childhood. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. And then she's worked out by avoiding plant foods. And some people just don't seem to get on with plant foods. Their well, you know, is that, is, that sounds to me like we're going to have to do another interview about that. That sounds <laughs> absolutely fascinating. But thank you so much uh, for talking us through this today. Pleasure. Thank and, you for um, having me. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.